thank you so much. Well, good morning. Thank you for taking the time to attend this webinar. I see from the list of attendees a few familiar faces uh, and names. So I really appreciate uh, some of the friends uh, being here. And for those of you who have not heard from me or that we've not had an opportunity to get to know each other, I truly appreciate you checking out this webinar. Uh, for those that know me, uh, you know I mean no disrespect. And so for those of you who may not know me, let me just say I mean no disrespect. But when it comes to PMO setup and management, I have a set of convictions that's very different from what I see advocated and practiced within the formal PMO management domain. So one of those convictions that we're going to talk about today is something that I've used a tool called the PMO Magic Quadrant to address. So today we'll go through the who, what, when, where, why, how of the PMO Magic Quadrant, and then we'll talk about some testimonials. So who created the PMO Magic Quadrant? What is the PMO Magic Quadrant? When do you use it? Where do you use it? Why you know, do you use the PMO Magic Quadrant, and how do you use it? Today I'd like to cover all those for you. Before we get started, I should mention that this particular tool is something that I used for over a decade in working with leadership teams served by PMO. Most of the time it was with leadership teams seeking to improve upon or course correct a PMO. Uh, about two years ago, in 2016, I publicly released this PMO Magic Quadrant, um, but up until that time, it was really something that I privately held. <laughs> And I would share with you that of all the sort of tips and techniques and things that I use with leadership teams, without a doubt, this has been the most valuable to me. And I so hope it will be valuable to you, too. So let's get started. Who created the PMO Magic Quadrant? Well, let me say right off the bat, uh, in 2016, I formally released and created the public uh, version of the PMO Magic Quadrant that's available today and that we'll go through in this webinar. But it would be remiss of me to not give credit to two other individuals. First, I need to give credit to Matt Light of the Gartner Group, who heads the PPM uh, practice at Gartner. And for years, uh, Matt and his team uh, and others at Gartner have used Magic Quadrants uh, in their assessment of providers of technologies and solutions. And there's many magic quadrants that Gartner Group has, and Matt is the one that initiated years back the PPM magic quadrant. Now, at present, I believe that the Gartner Group no longer uses the term magic quadrant. They talk in terms of a market wave, uh, and, and that's fine. That kind of meets the way they work with providers uh, a little bit better than a two-by-two -two analysis construct that they initially started. So, so I've borrowed greatly from the leadership of Gartner Group uh, in terms of this analysis technique. But really, it all goes back to Bruce Henderson of Boston Consulting Group. When in 1970, uh, he was the pioneer of what was the growth share matrix, still used today, uh, that positioned companies in terms of their uh, growth uh, in the industry and their market share in the industry. And you may remember the terms uh, blockbuster, cash cow, uh, dog, that refer to the different quadrants of that uh, analysis grid that you would be in based upon your particular growth and share very highly effective tool that was used with leadership teams in their business planning and product planning, still used today. So that's sort of the who behind the Magic Quadrant. Uh, I uh, am proud to take credit for creating it, but yet it's really a two-by-two -two analysis construct that has served many people in, in many different ways. Um, in terms of what is the PMO Magic Quadrant, like I mentioned before, like any other analysis construct, it's a two-by-two -two grid, if you will, analysis grid. Uh, and it's intended to help organizations with PMO setup and management, and it works like this. On the y-axis is the PMO mandate. Is it well-established or not well-established? Now, when I use the term PMO mandate, I'm really referring to the term uh, in a way that says, the PMO mandate is a codified purpose and value of the PMO as established by the leadership team and as unanimously agreed to by the leadership team. So that's what a PMO mandate is. Is it well established? Yes or no? 
binary choice. Then we take a look on the x-axis, PMO practices to achieve the mandate. Are they well established and in place, or are they not well established? Now, two very important points to bring out. PMO practices to achieve the mandate are not necessarily, and in and of themselves, a project management method out the line of the PMBOK, or the principles of PRINCE2, or a codified approach for how we go about Agile. I mean, those may very well be practices in the PMO toolkit. But when we talk about PMO practices in this context of the magic quadrant, we're speaking to the practices that are put in place, the means to the ends, that achieve the ends. And this is really important from a concept, and we'll talk about why a little bit later. Second, another important thing, really important to address, is that the magic quadrant, the magic of the magic quadrant only happens in the top right, where you have a PMO mandate, purpose, and value that's well established and unanimously agreed to by the leadership team. And next, you have PMO practices to achieve that mandate. That's where the magic is. The other three quadrants are far less magical. In fact, they're problematic. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's talk about that. When a new PMO is started, what I've seen over the years, uh, and oh, by the way, I should mention, please feel free to use the chat box to uh, uh, enter any questions that you might have. If I can answer it in the context of the presentation, I'll do so straight away. If you know, it looks like it may be beyond my ability to answer uh, uh, quickly, then, then we can hold that to after the presentation. So what is the Met PMO Magic Quadrant in terms of what I've seen over the years? So a new PMO is envisioned by the leadership team. There's, there's an idea for the PMO. And of course, the reason is based upon a business need, a purpose, and there's probably a assessed value. Uh, so, so that's sort of how a PMO comes to existence. But far too often, when a new PMO is actually started, you end up having what I call the phase one PPTT, people process tools and training. And rather than having a proper PMO mandate in terms of this is the purpose of the PMO, this is the value we're seeking to achieve, now how do we go about it by way of a sensible business plan? You have a well-intended PMO manager or consultant uh, abiding by the advice so often espoused in the PMO domain that the purpose of the PMO was to establish standards for the management of projects. And hence, the PMO rushes into a people process and tools, let's throw in some training, to get some people certified, business plan. And hence, that's why in phase one, the PMO is down low in that, yes, there's practices being established, but there's really no PMO mandate in terms of what specific. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over 1,000 hours of on-demand career development covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of The Great IT Professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.